this is Josh from Ag2Go and in this video we are going to go through the setup in the display for an easy steer steering system. We're going to be using a GFX 350 and a NAV 900 uh, but for uh, the purposes of this video you can use this with a 750, a GFX 750 and a NAV 500 or either combination of the, of the two. So first we're going to go into Precision IQ. And I've already set up my vehicle spreader uh, field and task. Uh, if you want to see how that's done, you can go through the GFX 350 uh, general review video. But we're going to do uh, one thing first, which is go into our vehicle profile. And we're going to hit the edit button. You can see our calibrate button here is grayed out. We can't use that yet. So there's something here that's stopping us. Uh, we can see uh, manual guidance is selected. So we need to change that. We're going to select the edit button. We're going to select guidance and then we're going to change manual guidance to easy steer. If you don't see easy steer in this drop down, there is a chance that the vehicle you selected is an unsupported vehicle. So if you go in and select a very common tractor like a, like a 4440, uh, that basically has a supported platform in, in all of the Trimble steering products uh, that will uh, select your, uh, that, that will give you the easy steer as a selection. So now we have easy steer selected. We're going to hit the right arrow. A lot of these are uh, generic um, set in as standard numbers. We are going to do calibrations to, to change some of this. There is a motor speed down here that I want you to just take a look at. Um, there will be times in specific vehicles where uh, changing the motor speed will help uh, increase the steering response. So something to keep in mind. I've seen this with um, articulated tractors and track tractors. Sometimes decreasing the motor speed helps uh, with the response. But for now, we're just going to keep it on auto. going to hit the right arrow again. The next thing is controller settings. So this is asking us which way are our connections facing. So it's either back, floor, or front. If your T2 controller is mounted on the floor and the connections are facing forward, you're going to hit front. And if they're mounted on the floor facing backwards, you'll hit back. And if you have it mounted on the wall, with the connections facing down, you're going to pick floor. Uh, for now, uh, during uh, this video, we have them facing forward. So I'm going to click front. I'm going to hit the right arrow. Antenna position looks good. And my measurements are all set there as well. We're going to hit the green check mark for save. It's going to ask, do you want to replace the existing settings? We're going to say yes with the green check mark there. And then one more time to save it. That's now going to save everything. You can see my calibrate button showed up here in the bottom right, but we're getting this no motor connected. So I just wanted to show you what that would look like. I'm going to acknowledge that warning. And I purposely had a cable disconnected. Connect that.
I'm going to hit my calibrate button now. So the first one we're going to do is angle per turn. So angle per turn is the angle that the wheels will turn during one full rotation of your steering wheel. So this set setting will smooth out the steering, uh, stop the oscillation back and forth, and ensure that the vehicle gets online quickly. So it's important to get this calibration uh, done, done well. So we're going to hit angle per turn. We're going to hit continue. And once we get up to speed, the steering wheel will turn yellow, and that's when we can click it. And it's going to start turning us to the right. Click it again, and we're going to go to the left. And there we go. We've got a left angle of 7.9 and a right angle of 7.36. So we're going to select save. And then we're going to do a roll calibration. So you want to do this on a flat surface. And what a roll angle is going to do is uh, calibrate the uh, roll sensitivity. So you're going to line up your tractor, hit calculate, standing still, and then we're going to turn around and come right back over the same tracks with our front wheels where our back wheels used to be and our back wheels where our front used to be. So you can get out and mark uh, the uh, outside of your wheel so that you, you come right back on the same line. So I'm going to hit calculate here. turn us around and I'm going to hit calculate once more And the roll offset is 0.25 degrees, which is good. Uh, you want to have that number somewhere below 4, I believe is what they say in the manual, but um, below 2 is uh, optimal. And if you can get it at 1 or below, that, that'd be great. Uh, hit the green as a save. If you, if you don't get below 2, you can just rerun this, hit the hit the X down here and rerun uh, the, the roll calibration. But we're going to hit save. And then we have all of our calibrations in. We're going to hit save there. Now we have easy steer selected, our calibration done. And we are going to go to the running man. This is saying that the automated steering system was detected. We're going to say yes. All right, once we have our calibration done, we're going to set an AB line and then engage on that line. And then I'll show you a couple other things. So first we're gonna hit the AB line creation button in the top right. 
and then we're going to select a basic straight AB line. I'm going to start by just pressing A. That will drop the first pin. And then we're going to drive forward 30 feet. And B shows up. You can keep driving or you can just park and hit B. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to save it? And you're going to hit the green check mark. And now it's going to shoot an AB line straight forward and then your left and right pass as well. So we're going to uh, start driving forward. You can see in the top right hand corner the steering wheel is red. Once we get up to speed and close enough to the line, it will turn yellow. And then we can select it and it will engage in the steering. So I'm going to park for a second here and show you a couple other things. Over here to the right, the steering wheel with the plus and minus button, uh, that is your vehicle aggressiveness. So this is going to um, determine how fast uh, you're going to get to that line. Um, so if you're, uh, if, if you're oscillating really quickly back and forth um, and it just seems like you're hugging the line but it just keeps steering back and forth really quick your aggressiveness might be a little high so you can tweak that down and if you're making big swooping s turns on and off the line um, with being over the line a second or two seconds or three seconds and swooping back over that means your aggressiveness uh, might be a little uh, too low so you might want to increase that I believe you can go up to 140 on this. Oh, you can go up to 150 on this. Um, and down to 50. So uh, you got a little room to play with. Most times it's somewhere between 90 and 120. Uh, but, but you can play with that and, uh, and dial in uh, your system. So a couple other things. You can see up here in the top right as well the uh, coverage mapping button so you can turn that on um, to map your coverage as you're in as you're driving around the field and then you can turn it off off when you get to the end of your row and turn it back on once you get back online again And then also engage by hitting your steering wheel. That is one option. So you're pressing both steering and coverage. I'm going to show you how you can actually engage the logging when you engage your steering. So when if you hit the home button on the top left and you go down to the settings here. And then click on mapping. And then down here it says record coverage. And you have the option to turn coverage on when engaged. So we're going to turn that on. So this is allowing you to turn your coverage mapping on when you hit that steering wheel to engage. So, it, so you don't have to hit both buttons. There are also other options uh, for uh, engaging. Um, if you click on vehicle profile, we're going to have to stop this job by pressing, pressing the stop sign there or up in the left hand corner. And then we're going to edit this vehicle. We're going to go into guidance and settings and then there is if if you have a remote engage foot pedal or a, a rocker switch um, you can select on this external switch and turn that um, turn that on to remote engage 
I don't have one connected currently, so I'm going to leave that as disabled, but that would allow you to engage on a line and also do the coverage mapping with a foot pedal or a rocker switch without having to press the display. So this ends uh, this, this uh, entry level tutorial for the Easy Steer with a GFX 350. Can also be with a GFX 750. If you have any questions or would like to see anything else, please contact us uh, by visiting our website or give us a call at 877-978-5477. Thank you.